put a disclaimer on the cat story. No animals were hurt during the telling of that story. <laughs> they, they both got out of there unscathed, but it was humorous. How many of you would say that your word is bond? One person? Okay. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that when you take, you make a promise or you take a vow that you will not break it. So let me ask again, how many think that your word is bond? That you are truthful. Now, I think most people would like to think that they are people of their word. Right? You give your word, you keep your word. Now, I don't know many people who would say, you know, right? You can't really trust me, right? You know, I'm a liar. I don't follow through on my promises. I don't know many people who actually say that up front. Um, it might be refreshing to know someone who knows their weaknesses and are willing to admit those. Now, I know people who are not very trustworthy. Um, I just make it a point not to rely on them for anything. Um, they will still be, they're still people that are fun to hang out with, but I know they're just not reliable. And what I mean by that, if you I think all of us probably know people who say they are going to do something, they're going to, they, they said they'll be there, and either they don't show up, or they just don't follow through, and after a while, people doing that, you just stop asking them anymore. Because you know they're not going to do it, they're not, they're not reliable, they're not trustworthy. Um, now, there is a good way to, I learned a perfect way to handle this situation, if you don't want to be one of those people who give your word or say you're going to do something and then don't follow through, I learned an amazing word that solves this issue. No. no. If you say no, you never have to break your word on what you said you're going to do that you didn't want to do. It's amazing how many people will say yes to something they really don't want to do that hope that something happens so they don't have to do it. Say no. If you don't want to do it, say no. I've gotten really good at it. I can say no before they finish the sentence. Mark, would you? No. Not at all. Would you? No. It's not hard. It's a very short word. But then if you do give your word, you show up and follow through. So, I've actually had some friends that, you ever have people that everything they suggest just sounds horrible? No one's willing to admit they have friends that every idea they suggest just sounds horrible. Why don't we just go, you know, why don't we go ski the Alps? No. No, I don't like skiing. The weather's cold. It's just not my thing, you know. You know, to, we have nothing to do. Why don't we go on a 20-mile mountain hike? No. Not for me. And I like to go out. I'm not going up 20 miles up a mountain hike. Somehow you got to get back. It's not. No. Would you like to help me move? No. <laughs> Never. I don't ask people to help me move, and I don't volunteer to help other people. It's horrible. How many of you people have moved? How many of you have ever enjoyed moving? So why would you volunteer to do something that you hate to do? So, now that we understand the word no is actually a great way to handle this, but when it comes to trusting people, you must see someone follow through with what they promise before you actually will start trusting them. You must see with someone stick to a commitment and, com and complete the task to determine if they are truly trustworthy. They will, this will give you an idea if their word is their bond or if they are just full of hot air. We're going to look at a passage today of the requirements needed to take a specific vow. We're going to look at the vow to be a Nazarite. This is Numbers chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Numbers chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, If a man or woman wants to make a special vow, a vow of dedication to the Lord as a Nazarite, they must abstain from wine and other fermented drink, and must not drink vinegar made from wine or other fermented drink. They must not drink grape juice or eat grapes or raisins. As long as they remain under their Nazarene vow, they must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine, not even the seeds or skins. During the entire period of their Nazarene vow, no razor may be used on their head. They must be holy until the period of their dedication to the Lord is over. They must let their hair 
grow long, as you tell I'm not a near about Nazarene. Um, throughout the period of their dedication to the Lord, the Nazarene must not go near a dead body. Even if their own father or mother or brother or sister dies, they must not make themselves ceremonially unclean on account of them. Because the symbol of their dedication to God is on their head. Throughout the period of their dedication, they are consecrated to the Lord. Now this is a passage that outlines the commitment to be a Nazarene. A person who wishes to become a Nazarene must abstain from wine, vinegar, grape, grape juice, raisins, basically anything that comes from the vine. They also must not cut their hair during this time of their dedication. And lastly, they must avoid all contact with or near a dead body, even if it is a close family member. Now that we know the requirements of a Nazarite, we probably should figure out, what is a Nazarite? A Nazarite is a man or woman who takes a pledge or vow to be in service to God, where their whole focus is in serving the Lord. Now, I know a lot of people accept Jesus and say they are following the Lord, but are they serving the Lord like a Nazarite? Now, we need to understand that a vow, especially when we're talking about biblical times, um, a vow made by someone pledging to be a Nazarene is taking their commitment to being in service to the Lord to a whole new level. In today's world, we would probably say this is equivalent to being a monk or a nun. Someone who's taken and dedicated their whole life to be in service to the Lord. Now, when a bad Nazarene made the vow or oath to be in service, their vow is the equivalent to a written contract. Now, when we think of the reason I mention it as a written contract, in today's world, we know a written contract is something that can hold up in court. Something that if we get in a feud with somebody, we can pull out a contract, the judge will rule in our favor, woohoo, we win, we get paid, or whatever the situation is. But it's something substantial to show that this, this deal was made. It was broken. Well, in biblical times, Written contracts, there were, there were some that exist, but for most people, their word was had to be their bond, their vow. It was a written contract. You see deals when they talk about they, they would have this discussion in front of others, and they took off a sandal and shook hands, and that made it a, a binding agreement. So when we see vows and oaths taken in Scripture, we need to understand that these are considered binding agreements the same way we would consider a deed or a written contract or um, any of the things that we hold in our important documents uh, case at home. How many of you have important document cases, right? I got to dig through mine because I have to um, renew my license, get a real ID, and a, renew my passport because I think we're going out of the country next year. Don't know. I only drive. But, um, so when we think about the vow or contract, we need to understand how important it is for the members in the biblical times. When we ask if our word is bond, it's a direct reference to, is our word good enough to be equivalent to a written contract? Could, could someone sue you if you didn't follow through with your word? If you're, if you're, if you're not willing to say my word is bond, then you probably shouldn't give your word on something. Because then it becomes worthless. For all of those who say your word is bond at the opening, and that you are trustworthy of the commitments you make, how many of you said that again? Or they have that based on some of the things I said? Okay. Let's, let's look at some examples. If your word is bond, mean you're going to follow through on things that you commit or you made a vow to do, how many of you have ever quit a diet? Or an exercise program. Didn't we say we were going to make a commitment to that? We were going to make a vow to do that? How about your New Year's resolutions? How about going back to get your degree? You know, I'm going to go back and get my degree. Um, paying off your debt. Seeing your children more often, etc. There are a lot of pledges or vows that people make that they just don't follow through on. So is their word really their bond? With over 50% of marriages ending in divorce, the whole pledge or vow until death do us part hasn't been held, hasn't been the 
would hold up to the word as bond test. So there's a lot of times that we probably can look at where we made vows or statements and we've not kept our, our vow. Now I'm pointing out all these times that we fail to keep our word to get a better understanding of how seriously the Israelites and how seriously God takes the idea of making a vow or making an oath. It is a written contract that cannot be broken without serious consequences. When we accept Jesus as our Savior, we say we want Him to be our Lord. Is our word truly our bond? Is it, or is it something that we're not really that serious about? Now, the pledge to be a Nazarene can be done with various amounts of time. Um, the time frames of being in service as a Nazarene could be as little as 30 days, and it could be as long as a lifetime. So, I mean, most of us, when we think of a monk or a nun, we think it's something they're doing for life. Um, some of the Nazarites you probably read about in Scripture, Samson, Samuel, John the Baptist, they would qualify as, as Nazarites, and they were uh, Nazarites for life. They were lifetime Nazarites. But the, the idea of doing a 30-day vow, that's like some of uh, some people who do a... Um, we did 30 hour famine, but you know, somebody may be doing 30 days of fasting. That's kind of making a vow, like a Nazarene, you're doing something to be close to the Lord, you're making a commitment. Um, and depending on how you fast, you know, you know, fasting, you can drink water, you can do stuff like that during fasting. Um, some people fast, they give up certain things. Um, if you do Lent, if you do the 40 days of Lent, you give up something for those 40 days, you are fasting of something. Um, so, the idea of doing something for 30 days is not uncommon, especially if you do the 40 days of Lent. Now, the purpose of the Nazarene vow was to raise up a group of leaders who were completely devoted to God. So, that's why those individuals are making those vows. And when the time of the vow was completed, the priest would accept an offering from the person who took the vow and present this offering to the Lord. The hair that they had grown during that time frame is then shaved off and dedicated and put in the fire with the fellowship offer. So all the hair gets cut off depending on how long um, you did the vow. And offering, and after the offering presentation is complete, the person is released of their time of service. Now if you want more details, um, I would encourage you to read the rest of Numbers chapter 6. So read chapter 6 Numbers and you get all the ideas of everything it takes to be in service and the commitment to be a Nazarene. Now, I am not here to challenge you to make a commitment of a Nazarite or make a vow of service to the Lord. What I want to point out is how seriously the Israelites took their vows and oaths and how they were equivalent to written contracts. It is something they would not break without serious consequences. When they made a vow to serve the Lord as a Nazarite, they were truly committed to following through. So now let's get back to our original question in the open. Is your word as good as bond? If you accepted Jesus as your Savior, said you're going to follow his teachings and go and make disciples, go and make disciples. Are you living up to that vow or promise? If you're realizing that maybe you misspoke when you said your word was bond, how can you rectify that now? People have a habit of saying things they really don't mean. Making promises they never intend to keep or say they are going to do things that they never plan to do. Realize your word is only as good as your actions that back it up. The problem with making those types of shallow promises to God is that he already knows that you're not going to follow through. So is your word really bond? When you meet God on Judgment Day, what will He have to say about your promise to follow Him? God will judge, will judge all of us on everything that he, we have said and done. And He truly knows our hearts. He will know if, we are just, if He is just receiving lip service from us or if we are truly making a vow. Looking at the Nazarene vow and commitment we looked at today, how do we need to reevaluate our spiritual journey at this time? How committed are we? And 
how faithful are we to our word? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we look at just the culture, the biblical culture, and how important a person's word was, that when they said they were going to do something that they followed through and they did, if they, it was like a great contract. That's how they made all those deals. And if you were a person who was known that didn't keep your word or keep your deal, nobody else would deal with you again. Because you would know not as being unreliable or untrustworthy. Um, when a family name is associated with those who don't follow through, that can have effects for generations. So when we make casual vows or say that we're going to do things and we don't follow through, how does that make us look? And how will people look at us differently from there on out? And how are we with our vow that we've made to the Lord? when we said we accepted Jesus as our Savior, we said we were going to follow Him. Learn His teachings. And go and make disciples. Is our word bond? Lord, we ask for your guidance and strength. In your all-powerful name. Amen.